Hello everybody, welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Chidi Ebere and uh, in today's tutorial we will be looking at uh, GeoFire because um, there is need for us to use GeoFire in our application for storage of particular location and for updating the location in real time. Uh, so we, we start by asking ourselves, this GeoFire, what is it all about? So basically, GeoFire is an open source library for Android that allows you to store and query a set of key based on their geographic location. So basically, it allows you to store keys or store string in, in keys and then be able to access it as well as be able to update these keys in real time. So basically, GeoFire relies on a Firestore database, which is a service in Firebase to be able to store this set of strings or this set of keys and be able to retrieve it by querying the Firestore database. And also, GeoFire can be is being used, uh, just like I said, uh, by Firebase to store and query the results, as well as uh, the rules for this uh, for accessing this data are also stored in the Firestore rules. Just like we I showed you in our last tutorial, where you are able to update or uh, modify the rules, the Firestore rule. Okay, let's quickly launch into one of our app and see uh, the Firestore. So this is the Firestore database. So basically, GeoFire relies on this Firestore here. We can create a new database. Okay, we can start in production mode, and this is the set of free we have. And if it's in test mode, it will have this. The difference between this and this, the production mode and the test mode, just like I said, is that production mode disables read and write. It forces you to set your own rules by yourself. While the test mode allows you to uh, read and write for 30 days. After the 30 days, like today is 24th of January, and uh, the next after if the the current date and time is less than 20, uh, 23rd of february which should be next month then it will allow you to read and write if not you cannot be able to read nor write to it so basically we want to start in uh, production mode so the next thing we do is to select a location so let's choose the default location you can select a region based on the one that is closest to you uh, so I enable this. So why this is loading? Let me give you an instance of uh, a situation or a scenario where you might be, uh, uh, where you might need to use GeoFire in your application. Okay, let's say for instance you've created this nice looking application for restaurants to rate the services that restaurants are providing, and uh, after this uh, this uh, app involves the name the business hour the prices the food they sell and feedbacks and the rest of them so after some time you now want to add the possibility for a user to search for a bar you want to extend the application for a user to search for a particular restaurant within uh, his or her current location or vicinity now that's where geofire comes in you can store the location for each restaurant using geofire and uh, this you do by assigning an id maybe tie an id of a particular restaurant to the geofire uh, field and use it to create the keys and the uh, location the set of uh, latitude and longitude that you will store in your fire store so this what why do we need geofire geofire is has a lightning speed when it comes to querying data in real time and updating the location let me say if i'm holding my phone and i and i move from one place to another i can easily uh geofire can easily update it even if i turn even if my phone move a few inch it can it will automatically update it in real time so that's why we need to be using geofire so the application will not be lagging so uh for us to integrate geofire into our application or flutter application we go to the pop spec and uh, we type uh, flutter underscore geo fire so basically this the, this is the one we are looking for this first one you can choose you can go for the second one uh let's see what the second one has 
okay it shows you the dependency and if it even shows you how to add this uh, latitude and longitude to it and this is how to use it when you add it here you automatically save and once you are able to save that it uh it automatically takes you to so basically these are guidelines on how to use this particular package geofire package with together with uh flutter if you if you go to offspec.dev you can get it and then be able to integrate it so basically when you add a location it will show up in this place and as you continue to slide this it will showing all those locations for you but uh the one i want to talk about is this particular one because it contains the rule uh which i'm looking for which we need to add so while uh this is coming up we can we can quickly take a look at uh we can quickly take a look at this firebase so this is where the data are stored for firebase the data are stored here the rules are located in this place the rules are located here so just like the rules for all document any document at all allow read write if false so basically this does not allow you to store anything in the firebase but for us to be able to allow geofire to make use of our fire uh, fire store to store it we first of all get the part where we want to be storing our values and initialize geofire and set geofire uh, initialization to that particular part when i say part i simply mean uh oh, sorry i'm opening my android studio so what i simply mean is uh here on this place we can have a part a part uh let's say collection we might have a uh, users and uh inside these users we can have a uh, auto generated id and uh we have uh, something like location so for this location is going to come to this place so this we want to be storing our data under users under users under this user then this the this then the locations latitude and longitude can be stored here but for you to be able to store it because the rules in fire store must be explicit or implicitly set um, you have to copy this set of rules here this set of rule allows geofire to interact interact with it so if i set this rule if i change this rule here and set it to let me see i set it to this see and then uh, my what mistake am i making so i will we'll come back to that uh forgotten how you enter it here so basically you have to set this rule this rule has to be set let me copy it again uh let's see where my mistake is this rule has to be set. So this particular one now, copy it and replace this. So okay, this this is it here. So basically, you set this rule and it allows Geofire to be entered into your Fire Store. And another thing we will be looking at is uh, down to this place. This is where you query, you do your Geofire querying. Now, what this thing does is that you enter the function or the uh, command you want it to execute at each of these uh, breakpoints. So what this thing simply means is if a key is added, what do you want Geofire to do? Now, if a key is uh, removed from the database, what do you want Geofire to do? Do you want it to close the application, move away from the map and the rest of them? So basically, on key move what if the value of the key changes let's say i'm standing here and i make a little move and uh, the key moves from maybe latitude 29 to longitude 77 it changes to that 
automatically you want to update your map and set your marker to that particular location on your application so that's what happens on this place so what happens on when the data is initialized you can load up your map and any other uh, any other thing as the case may be so this is uh, a service you start you this is how to stop a service a geofire service and once you are done with uh, maybe using the application you can simply remove the geofire location from your fire store so that when next you want to use it it wouldn't boot up the initial values in the in the fire store it will automatically grab the current location and put it at this particular location so this is basically a key something similar to what we have here something similar to what we have here under users so under users you have this uh, uh, unique id which is the same thing as this so you can remove the unique id which you use in storing it so let me quickly show you this image that captures what we are going to be doing so basically we have a location a site or a part just like i made mention here this initial part we have a part here and our part here says geo locations geo logs so we have a unique id which can be the person's uh, authentication uh, id a particular user authentication id and uh, you get it you use it in storing this is the geofire this specifies the geofire uh location for storing of the keys and the strings so basically i have l which represent my location this can represent longitude this can represent uh, latitude and this is the coordinates that i'm getting in real time it's being stored here so with that we can go ahead to start uh, creating our location tracking application google map application uh, taxi hailing application and the rest of them so in our next tutorial we'll be looking at integrating uh, google map google search and uh, location apis from console.cloud.google.com and the rest of them so for now we'll stop here thank you